Welcome to the Coaches Dugout, a podcast for coaches by coaches. This podcast is brought to you by All Sports Singapore. Do follow us on IG, Spotify, and YouTube. Today it's me, Isa and Herman, and we have here with us a footballing legend that needs no introduction. He has made the transition from a player to a coach, and we'll have an in-depth discussion on specialized coaching for today. Welcome to the show, Indra. Hi, welcome. Uh, thanks guys for welcoming me here. Uh, it's nice to be here again, you know, <laughs> good studio, good atmosphere. And, uh, uh, enjoy coming down here actually. Yeah. yeah you enjoy, yeah. enjoy it, especially after this chat. Um, hopefully you can give us a better insight about um, what you are doing now. Yeah, so before we start, would you like to just share with us uh, what have you been doing lately now with the uh, footballing scene? Uh, lately, I've gone into uh, personal coaching. Uh. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I feel that there's a bit of gap from uh, uh, team uh, training and also uh, some players will need uh, that extra uh, coaching in terms of uh, technical abilities. Uh. Okay. Uh, so I'm trying to fill in those gaps. Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the moment, I'm working with the younger boys. Okay. Uh, because of our unleash the goal, uh, the unleash the raw project. The raw. So <laughs> hopefully, in the near future, maybe you know we can more release strikers. more strikers and help Singapore to like achieve uh, success in the uh, world stage. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So, so in terms of the personalized coaching, um, so is it born out of the current uh, COVID situation? Uh, that you got this idea or is it something that you really see as a gap that um, the coaching industry in Singapore is lacking? I actually started this like um, before the COVID. So before the COVID. Before were... the COVID, okay. yeah. Um, I spoke to uh, R. Sasi Kumar about this, uh, you okay. know, and uh, he's so the been, son is with you, right? Yeah, okay. both his son is with me and I, uh, he's been helping me quite a bit uh, on this. Uh, but now the program is on an auto run so okay. not really much um, advertising whatever we have to do uh, but like i said uh, it's um i see it as a gap uh. it's okay. it i wasn't taking advantage of the uh, covid situation uh, because it started way before this covid okay. uh, happened um <clears throat> after i stopped uh, yeah. playing i had this idea of like going to personalized coaching you know like um some players especially the younger ones uh, we are always uh, focused on this team mm, uh, right. team play team play you know and uh, sometimes some of them may have dropped out of this uh, technical abilities uh. mm-hmm. we when we compare about when it was my time or further down you know mm-hmm. earlier years uh, the boys were always playing open field under yeah. the block that's where we developed so all these skills you know is also more. yeah but then uh, this generation they don't get they don't have the opportunity to correct, do correct okay. yeah we don't we cannot play at the basketball court we cannot play under the void deck you know so there is a lack of um, fundamental movements for these boys Definitely. Definitely. yeah so I'm hoping to like just try and help that so you're not competing with the team coaches but you are actually complimenting no no i always i always tell the boys uh, you come here for your technical Mm -hmm. abilities you improve your technical but you still have to go listen to your coaches your team Mm -hmm. coaches because that's where you are being put in a team and then play as a team you know so Mm -hmm. i'm not talking about tactics and talking about tactics and i'm not like you know uh, competing with all the other coaches because i'm just trying to help these players mm-hmm. so when they have these players they go like have an easier job to just mm-hmm. okay we just concentrate on mm-hmm. the tactical okay. bit, uh, situation now yeah so but but is it a, a, a specific striker coaching or is just a, a generic kind of uh, coaching whereby the, the player can be in any position i just you just going to work on the technical abilities at the moment i'm just working on the strikers because mm-hmm. that's why i've been playing for mm-hmm. all my life you know mm-hmm. so i the boys that are with me now is solely working on this uh, the finishing, aspect, the finishing of the uh, aspect of the game but then again like I said uh, um, finishing part is one thing mm-hmm. decision making is another thing okay. so that's where I try to uh, I get some advice from especially from Alam Shah you mm-hmm. know spoke to him mm-hmm. nowadays a lot of people technically very good okay. but when it comes decision to decision making, making uh, that's where they are lacking uh, so trying to implement some of this and trying to also put together a program where they can really work on all this. Okay, interesting, because talking yeah. about this, how does personalized coaching works, right? I mean, do you take 
any player under your wing or they actually you know they come to you and then you see hey, how how you want to improve so i'm giving you a three months program and by the end of the three months um i'm expecting you to do to be able to do certain things so how, how does it work because this concept is uh, totally new right? uh, you know some parents message me you know, but i don't want to sound proud or snobbish you know but the first question i ask them is at which level are they playing mm -hmm. you know because the program that I'm having now is more for like those who have been playing okay. in the elite setup or whatever. Right. Because okay. if they come to me and I do this <laughs> and they are just basically well, starting out, <laughs> yeah, correct, okay. then it's not fair okay. for the parents, it's not, it's not fair for the boys, it's okay. not fair, you know, for everybody. So okay. I will ask and if they are playing on a certain level, then I say, okay, maybe we can try out. Okay. Yeah. It's usually the first few boys that I have, I told the parents, well, it's like you come for the first session, mm -hmm. which is free. Okay. Let them if, try out first. Correct. Uh, Let okay. them try out. If they like it, then okay. then you can join. Uh, but because I don't want to just no, you know, get on board. Okay, I just get the money and then okay. okay like just sometimes run. like a personal trainer, yeah. huh? just train anyone. Yeah, that's here. why. So I will see okay. if they are okay. It's okay. But if they tell me that oh they are just starting starting out, then I'll tell them I'm sorry. I okay. maybe you can go to you know these academies mm -hmm. where they start out grassroots like okay. active SG. Okay. Then when they are getting they get better, better then maybe go. yeah. But but. For what I would like to ask also is that does the let's say a program for Isa mm -hmm. and a program for me, is it totally mm -hmm. different or is it based on based our on ability? our abilities? Is it or, or you just have a generic kind of? When I start, uh -huh. it's mm -hmm. always very general. Okay. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we need to see your abilities and mm -hmm. everything. But okay. then, after like a few of them, after the uh, second uh, season with me, mm -hmm. then only it be quite specific. It's okay. like one of them is like place at the side mm -hmm. or the other one place more, more centrally okay, okay. Uh, then only I will cater that program for oh. them yeah. okay. okay we've seen your your videos on Facebook and I think it's very interesting uh, to see them uh, the kids going through the drills like you say scoring scor at the side it's good marketing as well yeah right? definitely yeah. but just to ask if you want to share what kind of drills do you actually conduct in terms of the drills maybe you want to share a little bit more you were saying about the decision yeah. making aspect uh, hmm. most most of them I will play around with colours uh. You know, with okay. colors. Okay. Why colors? With because basically, when I just we just pass the ball to them, mm -hmm. they just finish. It's just okay. it becomes uh, uh, just repetition. Just repetition. Yeah. You know, okay. they don't no decision. No decision making. making. Okay. So when I put colors, okay. when they get the ball, then okay. I will say blue or red. Mm -hmm. Then they okay. they suddenly have to think that I'm here. Then red is here. So I got to you know how okay. I shift okay. my body, how I react to the situation so it also means that yeah. even before you receive they, they receive the ball, uh, the, the ball they will have already correct. kind of kind of do a scanning correct which is so very important they will know it. okay these colors are here these mm. colors are there wow. then the second round i will change the color so it's okay. no more because when you go same uh -huh. the next round they go like ah, okay. same color same, same color. so, they will get yeah. very so used i will to change it, yeah. then they go like okay then i got to okay. scan again all right you know, yeah. so all these drills are based mostly from your experience am i right to say that the scoring uh, part, yes. Uh, okay. Basically, all the ones that I scored, okay. I try to like, you know, yeah. uh, bring back and then try put it on so the So, create the moments again. Correct. I re recreate the thing. Okay, okay. I also need some, uh, maybe ideas from the okay. from YouTube okay. and everything. Because, like I said, if, plenty at the moment, actually. Yeah, if you watch YouTube only, okay. a lot of ideas, but then... The, how to execute it. How to execute okay. is a different, totally different thing. You know, I might have one... Very good plan, but mm -hmm. if I cannot execute and the boy cannot receive, mm -hmm. then okay. it's totally uh, interesting. Because yeah. I think decision making is definitely a big part of uh, not only just a striker, right? Mm -hmm. A modern mm -hmm. game player, they, you must have the ability to to scan your Correct. surroundings. Because to make technically, decisions. some of them are very good, but mm -hmm. when you introduce this, yeah. then decision their way of made. tactic, their their way of kicking, their way of uh, finishing be different. Then mm -hmm. suddenly they go like. Oh, what am I supposed to do now, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it makes them think and think and think. Yeah. So at the end of the day, the main focus is to score goals. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's, it's good. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think not only yeah. that you can use colours, you can use also timing okay. to, to, to affect mm. their decision making. Uh, yeah, yeah, correct, because correct. The, the, the lesser the time, mm. um, the faster they have to so think. So putting them into right? intense pressure. So intense yeah, pressure. pressure. Correct, so these yeah. are, 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 are okay. the things that you can you can use to in, in your training session. Mm. Really, that's a tip from uh, Indra. Right, right? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Another question for you is that uh, in the S League, um, we've seen the rise of local players such as uh, Gabriel and Amy in the scoring charts, mm -hmm. almost double digits, yeah, both. Um, however, both are not out and out striker. 
So do you think that the game has changed or in terms of tactics or is it because Singapore is really lacking uh, a traditional number nine if you want to say that? I'll just be honest. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just we are lacking the traditional number nine. Uh. Okay. You know. Um, why, why do you say that? Because nowadays most of the strikers are all foreign strikers. Yeah. We don't get. Mm-hmm. You know, strikers, and maybe yeah. it was our my time. Mm-hmm. I get to play first eleven. Latif yeah. was there. Mm-hmm. Alam Shah also was playing first mm-hmm. eleven in Sembawang. You know, okay. and uh, I think after Alam Shah, that's it. Uh. I mean, the Fani brothers are mm-hmm. doing okay. okay. Yeah, but other than that, we don't see anymore. Even though, even right now, the under twenty ones that just mm-hmm. uh, played, you know, they don't really have a number nine. Yeah, we don't see the the. the qualities of a under nine yeah. in any other but then again like you said uh, nowadays the whole game dimension is changing some teams don't have to play with a number nine mm-hmm. because everybody is mobile yeah, okay. but to be do that good a lot of trainings a lot of understanding yeah. say yeah. decision making yeah. must be there you know so hopefully the younger ones now are trained to be like that not but, but to I think just stuff as well for for coaches because if i'm the athletic coach the first position i want to fill is somebody who can guarantee me 20 odd goals a season, season right yeah. so if you look around who's available you know you got young players and then maybe okay maybe it's not ready i get the foreign striker to fill the gap so where do i put the the the, the local players at the yeah. side you know but then again <laughs> If you keep on doing that, when are they going the to be given a chance? Rise, yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely. When if you keep on saying oh, he's not ready, he's mm-hmm. not ready, he's ready. By the time you turn around, he's twenty-seven years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about you? When you first started out, how old were you when you actually let's say get the starting eleven? I was Eastleigh? starting eleven maybe at nineteen. Nicely, uh, uh, Robert Lim gave me that chance. Okay, start off. A big shout out to Mr. Robert Lee as well. Yeah, a lot of young talents he really, you know, brought yeah. up. So at Gelang, started out. I played in the first eleven already. Uh, me, Latif, and is there any mentor season, in you know? terms of uh, 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 actually a, a striker that is mentoring a foreign striker that mentor you? If we're talking about mentoring, um, I work with a few good strikers lah. You know, during even my Uh, Gelang time like uh, Warren Spink, mm-hmm. um, a few other players. Uh, um, but I really got a lot of experience when I went to uh, home United. Uh, you know there was Ekma there, uh, there was Perez there. You know uh, so I guess during that time we wanted to win. They had a foreign striker, but they still put a local boy in there. Mm-hmm. So I really had chance to like. To play. To play, then after that, after my first season, my second season, I was hitting maybe 15 goals every time, and on average from a, maybe from a center position. From center position, yeah. So I think in your point of view, that was very important for development for the young strikers. Correct, yeah. They but, must but be talking about that again, now I will pose you a question. So, for example, if I'm a young striker, uh, a coach put me out in the wide, wide position, right? So it's still an attacking position, and then mm. nowadays, like you mentioned, the in terms of tactically, it's very flexible in terms of um, what the team can can do. So it's actually a good position to be in as well, you know. Correct. Even uh, though you you're from a wider position, so does it really matter which position uh, that the striker play, in, whether you are centrally or on the wide areas? To me, actually, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It's just that when you are given a chance, you got to yes. show. So that that's more important, right? Yeah, the, the ability to, to to you know, especially like you said, putting on the side, you mm-hmm. got less pressure because at the side you might have maybe one, two only the match. So the center you have so many defenders. The center to you have so many, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then especially when you are young, when you are fast and you play at the side, it's yeah. very easy. Perfect, right? Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, so just just run into space. Yeah, that's why. So, I mean, end of the day, it's about really taking advantage of that opportunity when you are given. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, So it's interesting because yeah. I I just afraid nowadays the younger players if they are being scolded a bit you know so you see the generation changes yeah. so that that's the thing that that we face yeah. right now as well yeah correct you know even last time when you get scolded me Latif you know in the national team there was people like Fandi Kadi yeah. so if you get scolded means you get scolded you got yeah. no you know you cannot just after that ah, I don't want the resilience is there yeah, yeah totally. correct. Okay, okay, okay. Apart from the funny brothers that you were saying, any other current players that you will see that will go on to be the Singapore chief striker in the near future? Anyone? <laughs> Local, yeah. I, to be honest, I haven't been really watching. Uh, okay, you know. Okay. Uh, Where have you been? 
<laughs> but you know the recent yeah, tournament yeah. I like this uh, um is it Glenn? Guy? Glenn. Glenn, yeah. The left footed guy who scored the goal. Glenn Messi, and also yeah. that uh, Joel mm-hmm. Joel Boy. Okay. These two okay. you know quite impressive. Like you said, uh, if okay. it's a striker, that Glenn Boy is mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you will see someone coming from your personalized coaching in the future. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the next Indra. No, but, yeah. but now I want uh. to come back again. Let's see, it, now with this false nine position mm. and and whatnot, right? Mm. Uh, Muhammad Salah play from what position, and he's like now, okay. um, so called the top player in the world. Mm. Um, even Cristiano Ronaldo started off on a white area. Right. So is there a really need for so called Singapore to even? Okay, if we don't have it, okay, we don't have it. So might as well we we develop strikers. Um, in other position, meaning mm. that maybe in terms of the uh, physical qualities that we have, that's why Gabriel uh, or Amy Rekha is, is successful now. So, do you think it's is is it is that the case? Um, like I said just now, it's the case of you taking that opportunity when you are given. Mm. Doesn't matter, like I said, whether you play on the right, you play in the middle, you know, even if you play in the midfield, if you really want it, if you hunger mm. for it. You will, yeah, because like I said, nowadays games are always changing. Mm-hmm. You can be even playing in midfield and, being, and then end up at the top, uh, scorer, yeah. top scorer or in the forward position. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not a matter of how you start, you know, it's mm-hmm. how you end the game. You get into the box and how yeah. you finish and whatnot. Right. So, so beyond the personalized coaching, okay, how can you contribute uh, in the uh, context of Singapore football? Um, do you see yourself in the S League or even the national team? Because I think I, I find it really interesting that you are already on this path of coaching, and I think let's say for example, even Liverpool have a throw-in coach, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> even a throw-in so coach, set piece coach, not say throw-in coach, that's a set piece <laughs> okay, coach, okay, right? Yeah. So and, and it's not it's not uh, a new thing in in Europe whereby the coaches uh, they have a specialized uh, roles. Uh, if, if we can have a goalkeeper coach, why can't we have a, 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 a striker coach, right? So is this something that you see that um, will, you know, be more popular going forward? Or maybe this, for you yourself, is this something that you want to contribute more at a higher level? Um, of course, uh, you know, um, like I said, I think I spoke to Raiman before. You know, uh, end of the day, I would like to one day get into the sleep team, work with an sleep team, you know, see how the whole thing is run you know i've always been a player you know so playing is a totally different thing you just take care of yourself mind your own business and then just do the job you know but when you get into a coaching position where you have your um, coaches other coaches to work together with it's a totally different ball game uh, i've always wanted to go that route uh. Uh, i can't believe there's no team that is actually uh, approaching you, you know, know. The sad thing is, mm-hmm. it's always because they will be asking like, "Oh, have you taken your B or not?" Okay. Yeah. So is that um, a requirement for for a a coach to be at least be like specialized role, huh, For a specialized role doesn't have to. Yeah. And okay. I heard specialized role doesn't okay. have to. But the only thing is they cannot sign is usually oh no budget or yeah. oh they haven't have got his B so a bit difficult for us to um, sign him because how are we going to explain to people you know so like I said that. Uh, if I've not given given a chance, you wouldn't get your experience and yeah. Then I mean, end of the day, yes, the B you must take, but I can still be in a team and then take yeah. it at the same time. I can give you the role of a kid man. I mean, who cares, right? Yeah. But you go to the appeal and then you you, you contribute. You still learn. Right? You yes. still contribute. So, I mean, I'm just sad about that part. Uh. Yeah. Uh, but but going forward, is there something that you look forward to to to, to be a part of any of the athletic team? Of course, of course. Um, I think I spoken to okay. oh. <laughs> uh, okay. few people lah, and uh, most probably, mm-hmm. hopefully lah, I get to be with one of the athletic teams uh, in the near future. Look, look, looking forward because I, I really yeah. think it's a waste if 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 your knowledge is not being uh, passed on to the to the new generation. Because I'm sure this will really help the strikers in the S League. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe getting. Uh, mm-hmm. Three or four extra goals a season. I mean, see? energy, so, like yeah. you said, uh, yeah. I might not be the best, uh, but I still have some ideas or some, definitely, definitely. you know, okay. uh, experience in uh, that position. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, football is always a learning uh, journey. Uh. You will sure learn something from another player every time. And I think this is yeah. the mindset that we want from our coaches. Um, Indra has been a top top player for Singapore, and uh, the fact that he has this hunger, he have this humility to to even say this um, 
life on air eh, and and to say that he's, he's still learning and whatnot. I yeah. think this is already a quality of a good coach, right? So because a quality of a good coach is someone who is always willing to learn, uh, even though he's master of his trade, right? Mm-hmm. So you for you finishing is no problem. So now the the ability for you now how do you translate it by, by to teach others, right? Yeah. So and I definitely think that this is something that uh, we should look forward to. Mm-hmm. So whatever team that 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 uh, you are going to be with. Uh, I'm pretty sure next year they're going to be doing very, very well. I agree with that. <laughs> so, 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 in your opinion, uh, do you think there will be more roles like this? Not maybe just in, in striking, but maybe in other positions as well. They should be. They should be. They should yeah, be they we should, have goalkeeping coaches. Correct. We have goalkeeping. We must have those in defence, also okay. in midfield, you know. Yeah. Uh, because the head coach cannot do exactly. everything. Do everything. Yeah. You know, they will need help. And I think in Europe, they will, they have all specialised yeah. for that specific position. So, so I, I think we hope, we hope this can be something in the future as well. Yeah, I yeah. think the first yeah. thing is, the first step is what we should do is that we should actually uh, conduct a, a specialised coaching courses, right? So mm-hmm. it's, we have a, Instead a, of a general one? Yeah, yeah. so it's, okay. uh, the yeah. general one we can do it for just for the normal ABC, uh, okay. the, the, the generic uh, okay. Topics license, and, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, same as how we uh, a goalkeeping coach have to take a specialized okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, license right. to be oh, a goalkeeper coach. Right? Uh, <laughs> so this can be something <laughs> yeah. that the uh, people in the coach education can 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 pick up, right? So uh, conduct a specialized coach uh, a course for 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 someone who's interested in scouting in the, uh, to someone who's interested uh, in striker striking, uh, striking clinic. Yeah. So now you can do a striking coaches uh, <laughs> clinic for the coaches. Yeah. So, so I think this yeah, is something yeah. that we we should mm. look forward to because if we want to be professional, we want to mm. to. In, 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 improve the quality of our coaching. Then this, this is something that we can can look forward to. Yeah. So, correct. Like you said, correct. That gen, a general one, the A, B, yes, and okay. one. They have to go through. Yes. Correct. correct. But still, like you said, goalkeeping coach, they have this mm. st- whatever class. You know, mm. maybe strikers, yes. defenders, correct. midfielders. Yeah. Very specific. I think that would be really uh, super interesting. I would feel if correct. we can do that. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. just wanted to ask so you. Yeah, so hear it first time here. Uh. First time. Oh, what is it? <laughs> so we will set up, we will set up. <laughs> the coaches dug out, maybe yeah. we'll do a master class in uh, coaching. Specialized position. Yeah, right? So then we can yeah. do all these courses. Yeah. Okay, just to ask uh, for a striker coach uh, with a lot of experience and, and knowledge and everything, name three qualities of a striker that you think that is very important. Um, three qualities. I think you got to be calm under pressure. Okay. You know? Um... I, be, I think you must be very confident of yourself. Mm-hmm. And okay. last, the very last one, I always tell myself, I have to be selfish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because That's you are, right. you are paid right. for scoring yeah. goals. You yeah, are not yeah. paid for, you know, Correct. passing to others. But then again, selfish in a very positive, positive way. Yeah. Positive way. Yeah. 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 Not like you don't have an angle, you still want to shoot. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's not good being that selfish. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. but if in and around the box, you have to be selfish, you have to shoot, you shoot. And also, like you mentioned, uh, decision making. Yeah, also oh. decision making. But, but, but now you said uh, now you are coach, right? So how do you coach uh, uh, selfishness? How do you coach calmness uh, to to your players? You know, sometimes I do with the boys. You know, one ball, they will have the ball, right? But I will tell them that only say A will shoot, but not knowing that, not telling the A that the B when he gets the ball he will also shoot. Okay. You know, so there's basically both of so them are shooting. To, to, I put, to, to, to yeah, I put condition that way that the A will always think, oh, I'm going to shoot, you know. Okay. But this player, I want to see them go and take the ball and go and shoot. Okay. Yeah, so that that thing in them where they want, they tell themselves, no, I want to score, I want to score. Mm-hmm. You know, especially inside the box. I told them, inside the box, mm-hmm. you must just shut yourself off with everybody shouting and everything. If yeah. you have a good position or mm-hmm. even half... Look at the goal, you try and shoot. Don't wait for... If you never try, you never know, right? Correct. You don't pass your responsibilities to yeah, yeah. responsibilities to some other players. Correct, you know, correct. If you are there, you are a striker, you shoot. Yeah, you have to be selfish that way. Hey, Herman, when you ask this question, maybe Indra, do you also do uh, mental training in that sense? Since, mental? Yeah, since you do a lot of physical work with the boys. So again, when it comes to being calm under pressure... <laughs> Uh, maybe there's another idea. Not, do you not, do the... not yet. La. I think not, not yet. yet la. But would you think that is uh, something that you... I think in will... the near future okay. when they are a bit older, you know, I think should be. But now, at this okay. point Focus of time... be more on the technical aspect. Correct, now game, technical right? aspect. Okay. But maybe yeah. as a striker yourself, when you're playing against uh, big teams where you scored goals against Man United, Japan, mm. to name a few, what was your preparation like, like as a striker to become before the game against the big teams? Yeah. Uh, 
that one I always tell myself, mm. you know, in big games I will surely score. <laughs> yeah, but how do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's confidence. Your, your that, confidence. That confidence okay. in me okay. because okay. when I go into the pitch, I say, if big games, I I tell myself, sure, I will score today. Okay, and you yeah, prove that. Yeah, 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 that's why you know I managed to score. How can we translate this to the younger players? Like, as in, any tips from your side? That one a bit difficult. <laughs> <right? laughs> no, but but this is interesting, right? Because um, I, I I've read somewhere is that um. The, the key thing is actually the technical abilities. Okay. Okay. If you have this uh, very good technical abilities, right? So then this decision making will be automatic. So that, that, that's where you're going to be confident about yourself. But if your, your um, so-called technical ability is poor, right? So when the ball comes to you, you already want to think, hey, this is left foot, right foot. Uh, shall I control the ball? Like, so it becomes... Um, unnatural. Yeah. Unnatural. Okay. So I mean, that's where your calmness will go away. So that's where your selfishness. Yeah, no, I think I better pass. I so think that's, that that's, 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 that's it right. boils down to. Um, I think it boils down to uh, self confidence. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, um, telling yourself to be very confident and that. Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said about decision making. Uh, because maybe I've been doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know about it, and it just becomes natural. So it's like natural that. that you have that in you. Yeah. yeah okay. We not. I'm not saying that it's naturally in me. It's like maybe because I've been repeating, repeating, okay. repeating, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it becomes natural. So mm -hmm. if you, if I want to find out, it's very difficult for me because mm. I didn't know what I did, mm. you know. But yeah. it was just repetition, repetition, repetition. Mm. Then. So this is the thing about uh, coaching right now. There's a lot of coaches say that you know isolation training is not important. Uh, you know, when you do isolation training, uh, you are not uh, improving the player's ability to make decision. Um, that, that's where I actually I beg to differ because mm. uh, it's very important that you are able to 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 master the the technical ability what first. The technical, and the to do medicine. that, you need to repeat, repeat, repeat. Right then, yeah. of course, you slowly you put in other elements. You 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 make the space mm. smaller. You mm. work on the timing and th uh, and things like that. Yeah. And only then it become natural. So then that's where we can can get a, a complete package whereby the striker it seems that as though that he no need to think mm. before he he do anything. But mm. the work is actually done in like I said the technical ability of the yeah, players. I right? think that's the basic. The basic is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, the technical aspect. Uh. Yeah. I said uh, if technically he's good, then he have that confidence. The ball okay. comes. Mm -hmm. I say okay, I know what to yeah, do. Definitely. You know, and then it comes yourself. And mm -hmm. then after mm -hmm. that, it comes mm -hmm. to your decision making. Yes. You know? Yes. If your technical is no good, then mm -hmm. you start to think about so many things. Yes. <laughs> So, so how that's a very good point mentioned yeah, how you about this year. How are you going to make Even before the ball comes, you already yeah. think, oh, what, 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 okay, what okay. must yeah. I do, right? Yeah. Because once you are very good technically, when the ball comes, you know, this one, I know what to do. You can even take it first Then up, after that, right? you can go and <laughs> think about yeah. other stuff. Okay, but technically, you are not good. The ball comes, you say, this one, left, right, <laughs> use my body, use my face. Yes. After that, I still don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> this is really thing. I think it's a very good point that you mentioned that you will definitely score against big teams. You tell yourself that yeah, you will score. I always and you do that. Yeah. yeah. So this is something that we also can learn as well <laughs> uh, as coaches and how you actually uh, translate this to our players back then. I mean, and yeah. today, I'm always a guy who looks at the glass uh, half full. Okay. okay. Yeah. Positive guy. Yeah, yeah positive. So very positive. You know, yeah. Some people say it's half, you know, empty, but yeah. I say half full. Yeah. Yeah, so, so even before the Man United game, you know that you're going to score? Yeah, I always sure. tell myself, I should sure score. <laughs> especially Man United game, I should score. Yeah, so. Already prepared for celebration. Story, yeah. <laughs> okay, so okay, just just to pick on your knowledge a little bit, or on your on your brain a little bit, uh, what is the role and the requirement for a modern striker in your opinion? Uh, with whatever ch tactical changes and, uh, that we have now. So in, in your own opinion, uh, well, I think he what, really what needs for, to work for the team. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, to me, he must not be selfish in term of uh, teamwork. Okay. You know, um, one of the strikers now that I like, uh, but he the seldom play is Cavani. Okay. You know, when he came to Menu, whenever he comes on, you can really see he's working for the team. He's trying his best, even though he doesn't get really clear cut chances. Mm -hmm. But he is trying to help the whole team mm -hmm. too. So I guess that's one of the and things. Number nine as well. Yeah, it's really yeah, yeah, yeah. important for him to be like really because he's the one on the top, you know. Mm -hmm. If he can hold, he can bring the whole team mm -hmm. uh, to play, then he much better. Uh, so I always think that now strikers must be really team oriented. You know, he wants, he must sacrifice mm -hmm. and work for the team. This, uh, this goes with, um, in terms of in possession and without possession. Correct, correct. So in possession, that you say that how he gets. 
other players uh, involved, under involved yeah. and, and without no possession, possession yeah. how he become the first uh, the point first of to, uh, to press. press you know even when they lose the ball he's very near obviously he's very near because he's around there okay. so he must be the one to Okay. First one we've seen he pressure. created a lot of space for Ronaldo to find space to get some goals as well. Correct. When he was playing yeah. there. So that's why I kind of like Cavani, but it's just. So so yeah. when when you say that this is the the uh, uh, the requirement of modern striker, would you say that back then during your time you are you, you are not as uh, much of a team player whereby you you think. You, during Correct. your time, it's True. just it's about scoring. Yeah, because it's not I about never, pressing. I never defend before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. okay. No, I, de- I don't remember myself defending until I played for Home United under coach uh, Lee. Okay. Uh, that's where I really started to like, you know, really press from the front. We okay. have to like really put pressure. But, but before at, that, it's just about you. Scoring goals, goals huh? just scoring goals. Eh? At Geelong, yeah. was just concentrating going forward okay. at home under Steve Darby even worse he just tell me to you just wait there <laughs> okay. so, I don't, uh, so I don't really you know I just play with the last man mm-hmm. because they know if I get the ball the last man finish that's mm-hmm. it yeah, okay. so I'm just there I don't have to go around then then somehow I've got two very good midfielders in uh, Ideal Surachai so basically I don't do anything so uh. everything on the plate for you <laughs> what do you need to do but so how you do you do that transition? You say that in Home United suddenly you have to press. Is it something that comes naturally because as a player also you have that speed, or is it something that you oh it's a mind uh, mindset shift whereby uh, maybe another thing is as a player mm-hmm. you really got to adapt to situation. Yeah, the adaptability yeah, is very said, important, right? Humility very important. Mm-hmm. You cannot just think that you know I'm a striker. Why yeah. must I go and chase? Yes, correct, uh, correct. So you must always think that I'm. This is a team. It's a team sport. So. Everybody wins or everybody loses. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, when I was with Reddy, mm-hmm. he always told us, mm-hmm. if we win, you guys win. If you lose, I will take the blame. Mm-hmm. You know, he's always ready. So he's, he he told us, if you score 10 goals and your team loses, nobody will care. Yeah, true. Yeah. true. But if your team wins, then everybody will get that mm-hmm. uh, praise. You know, so yeah, yeah. that's why I say important, it's I think, is yeah. humility and also being able to adapt and play for the team. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, uh, just another question. Uh, following the successes of Singapore back in the Tiger Cup days, uh, how do you think we can get back the same level of uh, excitement and hype? Okay, before you answer this, I just want to share. Back then in our school playing days, we always played at the basketball court, you know, and we used to name ourselves after the Singapore players like yourself, uh, Danny Bennett, a few, few others. And, and I don't think we are seeing now in the modern generation now, people are comparing themselves to Ronaldo, all these EPL stars. How do we actually, uh, in your opinion, create back that, that sort of excitement and uh, hype within uh, our boys? Maybe start meaning. Me- <laughs> yeah. Okay, la, start yeah. meaning is one thing. La, but I think media also plays a part. Mm. Media, okay. You know, back then, the new paper, pages, new paper, new paper, new paper last few pages, yeah, yeah. always actually, correct, you know, correct. but now... Now new papers are doing it. Now you see one yeah. small, small article, you know. Yeah. So I think media plays a part. Um, players plays, plays a part. So they must end really think that... Um, they are now entertainers. Mm-hmm. They entertain people, you know. Mm-hmm. So they must work hard. They must, you know, every time they go on the field, they must really show. At least, even if you lose, mm-hmm. if you really show your heart, your, mm-hmm. you know, your your hard work, I think people will appreciate. There is no way you can cheat people when they say when they see whether yeah, you are working hard or not. You can never cheat on that. Do you think we can actually create this back again, this moment, this beautiful moment where our fans and our nation I, comes together? I think it, yeah. it's interesting because now with um, the Lion City Sailors, it seems that mm. the fans are back. Yeah, 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 yeah it's good. Are, and um, mm. recently I heard they are under 14 teams, whatever, they, they went Oh, the Europe trip to Germany Europe and Holland. They're doing and, very yeah. well. So, yeah. we never know in the near future that, that some that, of the yeah. boys that will be there. Yeah. The yeah, you know? Yeah, okay. then... Some other boys outside, like I said, we cannot ignore the boys that are not playing now. Mm-hmm. There will be a lot of um, raw diamonds out there that we don't know, that will come later, all these late bloomers. Mm-hmm. So we must give everybody a chance. Sense. Yeah. Definitely. So what are your goals in the next few years? Um, and where maybe do you see yourself specifically in, in, in maybe 10 years from now? I, I really don't know. Yeah. I, I don't really think that far. You right. know? Okay. Um, just contented with what I have at the mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but one of the things that my uh, short-term target is mm-hmm. hopefully to get into one of the athletic teams. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, work with the team, mm-hmm. uh, learn more on the coaching side instead of the playing side. Mm-hmm. Because 
I sometimes hear this comment when people say that you think you player you know how to coach ah <laughs> you know so I want to break that one like yeah. okay yes I was a player but now I'm learning to be a coach you know I want to learn to give you the opportunity yeah give me the opportunity but, but because I really hate when people say that you think you play you can coach ah you know like Irritating ah. <laughs> there will definitely be things like that ah, going huh? around and yeah. trying to stop us from doing what we love. Actually, correct. Yes. Yeah. Give me a chance. Let me see. If I cannot, then I say okay. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. At least, you at least, opportunity to at least when I get older, I say yeah, I try coaching. Right. Yes. Rather yes. than I go like, yeah, yeah. Allah, I wanted to try, but they all say don't. True. You know. True. Yeah. Interesting. So, but in terms of your your specialized coaching, your personalized coaching, mm. do you see going to get bigger? You maybe instead of just you working in your own academy, you you get other ex professional players to be part if there, of your. If there is, is a chance, I would I would um, just make it a little bit bigger. I mean bigger and also players who I work with mm-hmm. people like Amri, mm-hmm. people like Sharil, uh, people like Bayaki, Alam Shah. You know, these are the players where in our generation we did. Very well, World Cup qualifiers, mm. win the EFF Cup. Mm. So, why not bring these players back? Mm. You know, then uh, start something for the boys. Especially we got this unleash the yeah. raw project. You know, um, one thing I just hope that mm. the coaching fraternity mm. will always work together to hit this goal. Okay. Uh, I, I, and I, I really think mm. that you actually start off on the right foot because. Uh, I actually think that a lot of academy do it wrong. Um, this is my personal opinion because mm. when you talk about youth development, it must be about the player itself, the individual mm. development of a player. Okay. A lot of the academy, I felt that they are focusing too much on the team tactics and you know the result of the team. Who cares, right? Yeah. But now we we have here one one legendary player who's you know <laughs> decide to go against the flow to say that you know I want to. To develop the players individually, mm. I think this is the right mentality that um, not only you should take it, but generally in Singapore, if you want to improve, that you must do it because it's the individual that is important, right? Mm. Then, then you when, the yeah, team when team they team are team. they are older, they are fifteen, sixteen, then you can talk about tactics and whatnot. Uh, not at eight years old, nine years old, you want to talk about this. That's uh, why. That's why I I I always say that hopefully all the coaches in Singapore will work together on this. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, don't go against each other. Mm-hmm. You know, we work together to just hit that goal. Mm-hmm. Especially, it's for Singapore soccer. I think that's a very important uh, thing yeah. that you mentioned because at the end of the day, we have one common target, one common well, goal. Pe- yeah. People always ask, "Hey, well, how you think can improve? How you think can improve?" Okay. <laughs> but if this fellow do A, this yeah. fellow do B, this fellow do C, how are we going to improve? Yeah, correct. Especially in a basic, you know, where where we go, we touch on grassroots level. Mm-hmm. That's where we let everybody play, everybody improve technically. Mm-hmm. So when they go to bigger. Uh, I guess the they, yeah, they are ready. So the coaches will have an easier time to then only now that you can implement your the tactical, practical. your yeah. your game understanding. Mm-hmm. Pass, basic pass cannot control how you want to go. Yeah, true, true. Definitely, yeah, definitely. It's very difficult. Super interesting coming from Indra. Yeah. yeah, this has been a very insightful and inspiring session uh, with Indra. We have heard about important tips and values. On how to succeed in. Uh, I, mean, I think after this, there'll yeah. be a lot of academies opening up pers- no personalized coaching. Okay, because of this show, yeah, yeah. yeah so, okay, okay. So we also hear a lot of tips and uh, values to you. Yeah, very important to succeed in this path. I think we hear a lot yeah. of the word confidence, being confident, mm-hmm. and then doing it, and also being uh, very humble and being uh, very adaptable to different situation. So we really hope to see more uh, personalized coaching taking over a bigger role uh, in the future, like we see in academies and clubs or even the national team coming up with things like that. Uh, of course, end of the day, helping the development of the players. So again, thank you for your time, and we wish you the very best in your coaching journey. And keep doing what you do best. Don't worry about the rest, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, right. I like that part. Do the best. I forget about the rest. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got, yeah. got, uh... Because I'm sure there's a lot of people saying things and there, so I think just yeah, just yeah. give your best shot, and and I'm sure uh, good things will happen like, this year. Like you said, uh, yeah. you know, it's mind over matter. If you don't yeah. mind, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's like how you see the cup. Oh, he's very philosophical. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like you said, you just be confident and just do. Mm-hmm. Because end of the day. People ask me, I would want to say that I want to see Singapore football improve. Yeah. Okay. You know, people can just comment and comment and say this and say that, but. 
Nothing has been done. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I think before we end, uh, I think uh, being positive is also one more thing that we heard from you. We yeah, hope that all coaches right. in this fraternity can also learn from this and mm. be positive no matter what happens. Yeah. Yeah. And I really hope yeah. that uh, after this, more S League club will actually come and 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 ask sure, for yeah. help, you know, um, you know, just just to help out with their strikers uh, or maybe not even the first team, maybe their, their youth team. Yeah, even their youth team. Yeah. So so if you if you work for for this club, then you don't have to be specifically with any team. You can just go around and and and, and work uh, with the with the strikers, all right. So I think with that, uh, we come to the conclusion of the podcast for this week. Um, and remember to follow and like us on Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. Um, this has been the Coaches Dugout, a podcast for coaches by coaches. Thank you, Indra. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay.